hello everyone and welcome back to another video i hope you're well i hope that everyone had a fantastic christmas and a, and a great new year's now i am recording this on the 30th of december but by the time you'll see this will be in the new year it will be in 2024 so this year is going to be a very good year for me um a lot to do a, a big changes are happening like one of which um i'm taking my base of operation from here in australia and I'm going to be taking it over to England. I am quite nervous about that. I'm very excited for it because um, it means I'm going to be able to take the next leap with my photography and this channel. So yeah, in this video, we're going to be talking filters and the filters in question are magnetic filters. I've made sort of a switch over to the case magnetic filters. So I should mention this video is not sponsored. I'm not affiliated. Uh, with case I don't even know I'm making this video um, I don't even know if they know who I am um, so yeah this is just completely um, how you know this is an unbiased video um, if I think it's rubbish I will say it's rubbish if I like it I will say I like it um, and we're gonna do a little test on this so we're gonna see how strong these filters are on the camera so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack a couple of filters on the camera do a, a few shakes and then give one bit and do a really big shake and see if the filters do pop off and also I might see at what point they will pop off if I stack a few filters on uh, seeing if it weak, weakens it. I also want to do a test on seeing what they like to clean so once you get a bit of grime on them um, that now, normally I would use you know, a bit of sea spray you know going around the beach and that's probably some of the worst thing you can have on your filters because it can be such a pain but also oil, you know, from your fingers um, or from your head, you know, you sweated a little bit. Yeah, it can really mess up the filters and it can be a bit of a pain to clean unless the filters have got a really good coating on them and can be um, cleaned with ease. So yeah, we're gonna do that little test in this video. So yeah, um, so all the filters come in a nice little pouch like this when you buy the starter kits and stuff. The kit I bought was, I think it's the cool, basically a beginner kit. It's the Wolverine series. Um, all my filters are Wolverine. I don't know if that's a, a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I've got no idea. Um, I just went, you know, I just was online shopping and I went, oh, I might have a little look and then there were some really good deals. And I went, oh, I'll grab that, that was only cheap. So all up with three adapter rings, a lens cap, three filters, or no, four filters, it's costing me about $400. Um, so I did, why well, I say $400 is I did put in three separate orders. So I put one in for an adapter ring, which is crazy expensive, just for what it is, um, plus postage. Um, then I put one in for the 10 stop because I wanted a 10 stop. Um, it was actually cheaper for me to buy it separately that, um, as in the beginner kit and then buy the 10 stop, which is weird versus buying the actual kit. It comes in this lovely little pouch now. It does look like leather, but it's not, it's plastic. But I don't think that's gonna be a bad thing. It's gonna be nice and clean. It's gonna be more durable than leather because leather, especially when you're shooting around a lot of sea and, and wet, it can actually really fall apart. I don't think this is gonna fall apart anytime soon. Um, and what you've got in here is, or what I've got in here anyway, you've got five sections to store filters or your, your adapter rings and your and your lens cap, so the lens cap can go like that and just pop it in there. Um, so yeah, what I, how I've got this set up because these filters actually don't say like your stops like I'm, I'm used to. They say the ND, so like my 10 stop here is an ND1000. So this is how I've got it set out. So my polarizer is in the front here, then I've got my three, I've got my six, and I've got my 10, and I've got my adapter rings or any accessories I need to put in there. Um, so yeah. Nice and easy. So the polarizing filter, um, it doesn't you know, have two parts that rotate, it's just ever one fixed unit because there's no need for it because you're able to rotate it on the adapter ring like so. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So yeah, you can see it rotates when it's on there properly, just like that. So it's nice and easy and it's really nice and fluid. There's no real drag on there. There is a little bit, but it's nothing. It, it basically stop accidental movement. Um, so it's not really loose, which is really good. Um, so what you want to do when you have these filters um, is ha put your polarizer towards the back because my, the reason I say that 
is there's quite a lip on that edge. So let me see if I can show you. So yeah, as you can see, there's quite a lip. If I grab the ND filter, you'll be able to see it's not as severe, hopefully, if it focuses, if it will show up. Will it show up? Try and make it, there we go. So you can see it's not as severe right there as it is with the polarizer. If I have those side by side, I can do a good job of showing it, there we go. Yeah, so yeah, it's, um, so that will also have a nice light seal around there and it's not gonna have a light leak. So you'll pop that on there. And we'll actually do the first test that I said about doing a bit of a shape test. So we've got two filters on there um, and I'll just give it a nice little gentle shake. Seems to be fine right there, no problem whatsoever. I'll go up a little bit. Still no problem. And the thing that's flapping around, by the way, that's making that noise is my little eyepiece cover. Um, we'll go even more drastic, so pretend like this is like you've had a fall um, with your gear, you know, got your camera over your shoulder and you've slipped forward, you know, uh, on some uneven surface or some rock that you thought was stable but wasn't and ended up, you ended up falling. So we'll do for a nice big shake. Nope, nothing there. Actually, let's grab, put another filter, we'll put another two filters on there because this is the worst case scenario and I wouldn't stack two of these filters on anyway. So that might make it a little weaker. Oh, I can already feel the weakness in there. So I'll do weak, just that little thing there. Okay, that's pretty good. I don't know if I want to go to the next one. Okay, that came off. My filter's all right. Yeah, they're absolutely undamaged, thankfully. It, even though it made that noise, so they're good. So what we'll do now, is, since I've got a bit sweaty after doing that movement, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the polarizing filter, I think this is, yeah, the polarizing filter, and I'm just gonna get a bit of sweat, rub it on my, uh, from my head here, uh, gather it, because it's quite warm in here, and I'm just gonna rub it on the filter there. Lovely, lovely thing. Now, don't worry about this. I am a trained professional. I've been doing photography for a very long time. I don't know if there's anything else I can make it bad. No, it's just the worst you can do to a filter, really. Um, actually, I might be able to see it if I go through my shirt or something, perhaps. Yeah, you can see there's a few little grubby marks on there. So that's pretty bad. I've got a nice clean lens cloth here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this lens cloth around my finger, just like so. And I'm gonna breathe onto this, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean from the middle going to the outside and outside motion. That way I'm bringing all the dirt and debris from the middle to the outside of the ring and then I'm wiping it off and taking, removing it from the filter. So that's what I'm gonna do now. A little breath on there. And then rot do the clean. This is quite easy and this is actually cleaning off quite nicely. So I'll go to another clean patch and I'm not gonna breathe on there because I don't want the moisture. I just wanna take it off nice and clean. Same again and that is a very easy filter to clean. I'm, I'm blown away by that. I honestly thought for the cost of these filters, because they're reasonably cheap, um, they were gonna be hard to clean. Um, you know, I've got a filter here by Hyder, which was more expensive than actually uh, some of these filters. This is my uh, six, three, three stop, I think. No, this is my two stop. And um, yeah, this was about, I think about $200. Um, so yeah, my uh, 10 stop was I think $108 or something. So yeah, and this is a pain to clean. Um, my more expensive filters, this is a Hyder Red Diamond. Uh, these are about $200, $250. Um, I've got quite a few of those. They're really good to clean and really easy. And you know, these filters, are, have the same or a similar coating to this, which is gonna be so nice. So yeah, great for when you're out in the field. Um, I'm trying not to make this too long of a video because there's not really much I'm doing in this video. We're not going out on location. That's gonna be for another time. Um, I'm probably gonna to go to a nearby, nearby beach, which I, had, I shot at when I was learning a lot about landscape photography. I shared a lot on my Instagram account, but I haven't really done anything here on YouTube, I don't think. Um, oh no, there is, there is one uh, going back uh, I think back to 2017, 
um, when I was shooting on a 1300D and I was such a beginner back then, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea about ND filters, I just grabbed a cheap Zomni filter, I think, off, offline. The only thing that isn't magnetic is the front lens cap. This does require um, the magnets, um, or it doesn't have any magnetic components in it, so it does require a magnet to be used, otherwise it just won't stick. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it won't stick, there's no way. Um, now it does look like there is a little bit of thread on there, perhaps. Um, I don't know if it would fit, screw onto my, my lens, let's see. You can actually screw it on there as well, so I didn't know that. I haven't actually watched any reviews on these magnetic filters, I had no idea, had no idea what to expect. I just wanted to go in with an open mind and see how it is, really. Um, yeah, and also as well, this has got like a nice little velvet thing. Quite cool, I've never seen that on a lens cap. I've seen it on lens hoods and inside of lenses, but I've never seen it on a lens cap. So that's quite interesting. I guess it's to protect the glass, but I am a little bit concerned perhaps. Actually, I don't think it's gonna be an issue, but if you get any dirt on there and then you put it onto there when you're in a rush, and then they rotate like a bit of sand or something, would it scratch the filters? Yeah, I've got these adapter rings across all my lenses. So I've got it on my um, 17 to 40, which is attached to my 5D Mark IV right here. Then I've got it on my 24 to 105, which is the STM lens. Great little lens. They're quite cheap and affordable. You can find them pretty much anywhere. And then uh, you, I, I've got it on my 100 to 400. So yeah, it just makes it nice and easy. And probably what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to use the magnetic or oh, the uh, case lens cap on my 100 to 400 to just keep it nice and easy and, and simple so yeah um, i'm really looking forward to getting out and using these filters um when i move back to england this is the system that's going to be coming with me then my other system my main system which is this setup here um which is another reason why i've sort of gone for this because this is super lightweight this is a bit heavier and it's as you can see cumbersome and quite big and I take this out with me on pretty much all my shoots because I never know what I'm going to do. Um, I've got some mist filters here, um, I'll sh show some examples of what mist filters do. Um, it really helps me like minimise the scene, um, really gives me this nice atmosphere and it's great for my light long exposure black and white photography. It does work for sort of colour but I much prefer it when it comes to black and white. And then in here I've got mainly my ND filters, I do have a polarizer in here and a graduated ND and then obviously in here I've got my adapter rings and uh, my holder. I'm looking forward to getting out there, um, I'm not sure how far in the future it will be until I can get, actually get out to the local beach. I'm waiting for good lighting conditions, um, good, because um, it's just basically blue skies out there today and um, I want some nice atmosphere in, in that sky. Um, also what I should mention, yes these do vignette as I found out so um, if, if you've got two filters stacked on say like a polarizer and an ND you will notice the vignetting in the corners and it's quite quite bad. Um, though I think it, it, that's more so with a wide angle lens, an ultra wide angle lens. If you had like a 24mm you're not going to see that vignetting to be honest. Um, but yeah, if you were to have a shoot with a wide angle lens, what I would suggest is that you maybe go for an 95mm filter system and just get an adapter ring that goes down to a 77 or an 82. Um, so what that will allow, you'll have more glass overlap to the sides because what's causing that, um, that vignetting is just the, the metal elements um, on the side of the filters which is causing that. So if you have more glass on the front of your lenses to the sides, you should be able to get away with using a wider lens. And I'm looking forward to getting out of these filters and um, I'm sure it's gonna be quite a joy. It's gonna be really good and it's gonna make it easier, especially when I'm in those uh, areas where it's a bit sketchy and um, a bit perilous and I'm always worried about using these filters. Um, and they're expensive as well, as I've said, where well, these filters are not very expensive for me in the grand scheme of things with all my gear. So if I break a like an $80 filter or something, it's, it's all right, I can easily buy that again. It's not like damaging a $200 filter or a $300 filter. So yeah, anyway, I'm Simon, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Okay, bye for now.